Uh, Sun Media brought it to our attention about the concern about who these individuals actually were. Uh, I thought it was uh, actually a very good question. I sat down with the head of the Canada Border Services Agency, uh, Luke Portalance, and uh, indicated uh, why we shouldn't be seeking the help of the public in identifying some of these individuals and getting them out of the country. Uh public Safety Minister Vic Taves. Are there war criminals walking amongst us? How well do you know your neighbors? A list of 30 deportees was released today, men the government views as dangerous, potential war criminals that Canada is hunting down to boot them out of our country. Ahmed Hussein, National President of the Canadian Somali Congress, joins us from Toronto. Ahmed, we'll get to the humanitarian disaster in Somalia in just a moment. Okay. But there are three Somalis that are on the list that was issued today by the Minister Vic Taves. Are you, uh, like the Rwandan community, uh, interested in participating in hunting them down? Well, we don't. Uh, I think uh, that's a, a role that is best uh, carried out by our law enforcement officials. However, as Canadian citizens, uh, like everyone else, we have an, an obligation and a duty to contribute to the safety and security of this country. So. If uh, any member of our community uh, comes across a war criminal, then it's their duty to uh, let uh, law enforcement know about that. Mm -hmm. Certainly we're not suggesting vigilanteism here, but I noticed that the Rwandan community has decided that they need to take an active role in rooting out the people who may be war criminals who are living in the country and are part of this uh, problem that now Vic Taves and Jason Kenney have both talked about in recent weeks. So uh, it's nice to hear that your community recognizes that that may be an issue for them going through the police. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on to uh, another very, very serious issue that we're dealing with with Somalia right now, yes. which is the famine in Somalia. The United Nations has declared it a, sam uh, a famine. Yes. Two children out of ten every 10,000 are dying every day. Can you bring us up to speed a little bit on Canada's efforts and talk to us about whether we are doing enough? Well, first of all, the, the famine is official now. And uh, the UN has declared uh, that the epicenter of this uh, famine is in uh, south central Somalia, in two uh, districts of Somalia, uh, namely the lower Shabele region and Bakol region. You have uh, the deaths of six children for every 10,000. Uh, six. Six out of every 10,000. So it's actually higher than two. And uh, on top of that, you have higher than 30% acute starvation in children. So we're talking about a full-blown famine in those two major districts, and if nothing is done in the next three months or shorter, you're looking at mass starvation and, and famine in the rest of the, of the provinces in the south of Somalia. Now, we know that Somalia has kind of been teetering on uh, famine for quite some time, but suddenly this year it got to a critical state. Yes. What happened? Well, actually, uh, it's been uh, developing slowly uh, towards this point. And the uh, international uh, non-governmental organizations that, uh, that have, have been talking about this and have been repeatedly warning about the fact that we were, we were heading to famine, but nobody was listening. They kept saying, you know, please, we need to step up anti-famine programs uh, for, the, for, for Somalia and East Africa in general but no one listened and it's really unfortunate that we got to the point of reaching a full-blown famine before uh, this becomes uh, this has become now uh, 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 an issue that has uh, galvanized people's attention now you mentioned six children dying out of every 10,000 why are children specifically at risk in a famine they seem to be the ones who are the majority of the casualties well because they have uh, uh, a lower uh, resistance to disease and uh, and harsh temperatures. Uh, they also can't bear the long trek that is necessary to seek water and shelter uh, and food. And so uh, you have horrific tales of children and the elderly being abandoned by their family members because they can't make the long journey to deep into Kenya for food and water. Uh, the mm -hmm. international NGOs and the media, mainstream media, is focusing on the people who are strong enough to arrive at the refugee camps deep inside Somalia. But the people who are worse off than that are the people who couldn't make the trip. So there is an absolute need 
for non, uh, humanitarian, non-governmental organizations to go back into Somalia and do the uh, anti-famine programs that uh, they used to do in the past. Mm -hmm. The images don't do justice to the depth of the horrific suffering that's going on there right now. But our uh, minister, Bev Oda, is over there right now. Can Canada has given $22 million in aid. What are you hoping is accomplished from Minister Oda's visit? Well, uh, we're hoping that after Minister uh, Oda uh, uh, has seen the, uh, the seriousness of the situation, that she and the rest of the government of Canada will proceed very quickly to a pledge to Canadians that they will match dollar for dollar every donation that's made by Canadians to this famine. The second thing that the government of Canada can do is Canada is part of the international group contact group on Somalia, which is a group of nations that coordinates policy on Somalia. And the Canadians and the rest of the international contact group can force or push pressure the uh, U.S. government to uh, to return to uh, the uh, World Food Program uh, share that uh, the United States government, uh, the lion's share of World Food Program money used to come from the United States. The United States cut that money last year because of concerns that some of that food was going into militants allied with Al-Qaeda. It's a genuine concern, however, because of the famine, there has to be a better way of trying to monitor the uh, the food and the aid to make sure that it doesn't reach those people, but actually targets uh, the people most at risk. And uh, we believe that was, Canada can encourage the United States to do that. Yeah, now uh, that is a major problem, the diversion of food aid in Somalia. And I understand there are a million people, perhaps more, for whom we have not even been able to get in. Mm. NGOs haven't been able to get in and deliver food. This, the state of security is still very, very tenuous in Somalia. It's a lawless country. How do you get food aid in? First of all, there is a, a growing uh, African uh, Union uh, peacekeeping mission that has secured uh, a large portion of Mogadishu, the capital, and also established uh, their presence with, with the weak uh, uh, federal government in parts of central and southern Somalia. So there are corridors and pockets of territory where uh, NGOs can uh, operate uh, freely. Secondly, the, uh, the terrorist group uh, Al-Shabaab has made a pledge that they now welcome the return of NGOs back into the country because they recognize how serious the situation is. And finally, the U.S. government has in the past, there is precedent in cases where there's concern that some of the food money may go to ter terrorists. Yeah. Uh, the U.S. government has found a way to give exemptions to aid organizations to allow them to m better monitor the food aid and directly reach uh, the people most affected without helping uh, armed groups like the Al-Shabaab. They've done that in the Sudan and they've done that in other places. We, can, we believe that they can do that in, the, in uh, the Treasury Department can find a license to do that in Somalia as well. In Somalia. Tell us how people can help just as we wrap up here. They can help by helping those who are on the ground doing amazing work, Oxfam Canada, Care Canada, the World Food Program, and so on. That's where the donations need to go. And we, we are requesting that the federal government, the government of Canada, match dollar for dollar. Every uh, dollar that is donated by Canadians should be matched by the government of Canada dollar for dollar. Ahmed Hussein, thank you so much for being with us. Ahmed Hussein from the Somali, Canadian Somali Congress, thanks so much. Thank you.